Hello, this is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, January the 8th, 2019, and I'm going to hand it right over to Miss Vegas. Hi, everyone. Hope you had a good trading day. It's Tuesday. So, uh, let's see here. Tonight, I'm going to talk to you about a couple different things. Uh, so, first one we're going to talk about today will be VHC, ANFI, VTVT, XBA, Glue. And Mbot. So I don't have a bonus for tonight. Um, so stay tuned for those in future episodes. So let's get started and let's talk about VHC. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, Vernet X, if that's pronounced properly. Um, obviously, I don't know if you guys know the history on this company, but this company has actually a court case pending a patent validity uh, against uh, our friends at AAPL, Apple. And Apple actually is challenging the $302 million infringement verdict, and um, which was awarded to Vernet X. And they're actually, in fact, challenging the patent trial and appeal board's decision that patents are invalid. So the decision is actually not expected for months. But I don't know if that is, um, you know, why it surged. It did surge today because the appeals court heard their patent arguments. So the decision from the panel uh, has yet to be rendered. So they've heard both sides. And now we need to see what the outcome is really going to be. So I did notice some activity on the stock. And uh, I was happy to report that I did share the alert idea as a day trade only early this morning. Right at what price, Jim? Um, Do you remember? Early this morning. No, I don't. I alerted this this morning at 325. So um, the room had an alert on the stock this morning at 325. I alerted it as a day trade idea at 1112 in the morning. And said VHC idea 325. That was the spot where we, we would look to get into the trade. Uh, quite a few people did take the trade. A lot did not. And you know what? They were regretting it later because, Jim, you can turn it over to you now. And you talk about the exciting action that really took place on this chart today. Yeah, first thing I did was pull up the day's chart. And I said, Vegas, wow, you really called a good one right here. And then I pulled up the year's chart. And that really kind of opened my eyes up. It reminds me of something that uh, it's easy to draw out, easy to, to draw your trend lines and stuff. Vegas alerted here, she said, at 325. But you can see these channels that they were playing in and how this dropped off and how it bounces back up and around. So I'm, I'm going to kind of draw these out, and I'm going to see how they reference to the day chart. So I'm gonna, this is how I usually draw my trend lines. And I look for like places that leveled out and I'll go ahead and add my trend lines to that and you know bring it up to about here, draw it all the way across. You know, I'm seeing some pretty good support right there at the 379 level. And then we're here we are up here hanging around and I see a good spot right in here. And I'm drawing it up around here. So I'm trying to look for resistances as this thing runs up. And I'm calling them out as I go. And I'll probably throw one right there, and I'll throw another one right in here. Throw one right there. And I just try to look for places that balance out, that, that could give me a, a halfway decent resistance. Here we are at 410. So I'm, I'm just doing this up for you real fast, and we're going to look at it on a daily and see what kind of rival I get here. And I just keep going on up, looking for different resistances, and I keep following it on up. Keep following it all on up. There's a little spot right here I'd probably call around 439. Now bring it up here. You see how this kind of flattens out here. I'm not using the wicks, but I'm using the bases of the candlestick. And I'm going on up. And I just keep going on up. See how that matches here, how it matches there. About a half a year later. They just history repeats itself constantly when you're looking at charts. And that's what I try to emphasize in the room and to anybody that's following me. Because they say, How Jim, how do you get these? pinpointing so well. well this is how you do it you kind of just keep trying to find trends that consolidate so we're going to bring this now down to a 20 day 
you know, let's see how these all lined up here pretty good on this day chart. And I'd add one right here for a support level. Now this is a 20 day. You see how it stopped right here on this one? How it stopped right there, how it stopped, how it stops at these resistance, and I'd add one more right here. Then I'd bring it to daily. Daily one minute. And then there we are. It's almost identical to every place where that support was. And I just did that off the 20 day and the yearly chart. Look at how they how they match up, how they line up. Look at that. Every one of them lines line up to, to a place where it consolidated on a daily. See how when Beggett's even poked this out right here and, and noticed it, that's just out of the blue. That's why I painted the line blue there, hee <laughs> hee. But every time it, it every time I hit one of them trend lines, like right here, see it stopped there. Not add me one right here for a support level. And then that's about how I look at them. So this is VHC. Vegas called a pretty good run. She called it at 325. It ran all the way up to 466. You could have scalped this thing a few times. See how it pulled back and hit the daily 200 right here on a one minute. Then how it rode up against the 50. And that's what I, I try to emphasize. You know, these, these moving averages work great for me on breakout stocks, especially when they pull back because they seem like they're more relaxed than working off the EMAs, but I, I use them too. I also use them. You can even see where this pulled back right here after hours, right to that trend line, which was a resistance earlier in the day. And this was trend line was drawn from the previous yearly chart. So that's basically how I draw some of them trend lines. And this is VHC. We're going to keep it on watch. And if it pulls back, I got a support level right here at the 421. And if that don't hold, we probably bring it down to 401, which is a lucky number for me. It's my old employee number. But you can see how it bounced off that 50 SMA right there, bounced on up and hit a new high, and then pulled back and hit that 50 again after hours, and it bounced up off of it. So this is just one simple way of drawing trend lines and using the uh, 50, the 100, and the 200 SMA. And that's VHC. And the next one, Vegas, you want to talk about is? Yeah. So I want to talk about ANFI. Yep. So this stands for Amira Nature Foods. Now, before I get into the details of the stock, I do want to let everyone know a little bit about the company because you know what? It's a really interesting uh, company. Uh, and it's good to know because it helps you understand a little better you know, what is this company all about? And you can actually better understand when the stock starts to move. You, you'll remember what I'm telling you guys. So I just want to mention, first of all, that this company has been around since 1915. Oh my. And uh, it's a family business. And uh, it started with a um, family member named Nav Bharat Chanana. And what they would do is they used to sell local beans. And then his son, Karam... Uh, took over and then Anil got involved in the company and when Anil got involved which is the third generation of the family in 1968 he actually said let's change the name of the company and they changed it to Amira and he decided that he would actually start focusing the business on exporting so he became um sorry he started to export the company like products from the company and then Karan Chanana who's the current CEO he's the fourth generation of the family member to run the company. Now they are in Dubai and they have offices in India, Germany, United Kingdom, and the US. And they are the parent company of Amira Pure Foods. They have an office in India, get this, 310,000 square foot facility that mills basmati rice. And um, in 2008, they were selling products under the Amira brand. They went IPO in 2012, and then in 2013, they decided to purchase the Basmati Rice Company, uh, which is a German-based distributor of Basmati, and that was the first acquisition following them going public. And then after that, they did an e-retail partnership with a company called Snapdeal to basically sell, can you believe this, Basmati online. And then after that, they did retail distribution with, guess what, Amazon and uh, Publix and uh, also Costco and Whole Foods. So as you can see, Amira is actually a very 
interesting company because they're obviously very involved in the rice, organic ingredients, oil, and also spices. So they actually have very good revenue. Um, but the reason I like this company, uh, they had some news not too long ago. So the news from this company, they had two pieces of news actually. So if you guys remember, they did announce just before the new year that they had a $30 million contract with a repeat customer. So that is really, I mean, that is not small change. Um, that is great. And, uh, the deal was, um, with uh i think it was a third party branded basmati repeat customer i don't think they were they named who the customer was they just called it the emea region and uh, i guess they don't want people to know who the customer is but uh they did it was a 30 million dollar contract but what's interesting now is they did announce today that they hired hervé laurent and uh this gentleman is very interesting background so he actually uh, is 39 years old and he's the co-founder of a crypto venture. He's very involved in crypto and blockchain investments. And he's also a partner at Geneva blockchain advisory firm. And he's also a very uh, talented speaker on the subject of Bitcoin and blockchain. Now, what the heck does this have to do with Amira? We don't know. Um, he used to work though. This is what's key here. He did work as a brand manager at uh, Moet Hennessy and also at uh, Louis Vuitton and uh, he also had lots of experience as an analyst at Pernod Richard in France so as you guys can see he's got a lot of experience he also got his MBA from Columbia and um, his BBA in finance from Concordia so you know what this man's quite smart for a 39 year old gentleman he's got a lot of experience behind him so I believe that uh, maybe someone like him, who's uh, so well versed, I can just imagine maybe with his blockchain, you know, with all the, you know, um, products being sold, they can track what's going on. I mean, blockchain's a great way to track data, where your sales are going, who's buying and all the hands it's going th passing through. So that's an interesting um, gentleman that they've brought to the member of the board. So let's see what happens with this stock. So I did alert it today at 60 cents and did mention that uh, looking for a target of 76. And my gosh, we hit that, no problem. So that was a great day trade. But Jim, I'd like you to talk about the chart and if you think or see that there could be a continuation here or not. And if not, where we can keep an eye on for a potential re-entry in the stock. Yeah, I really, I really, I pulled up the website, and they really have a cool yeah. website. So very cool. If you get a chance, pull this website up. It's it's really a, <laughs> I'm impressed with their their products. Mm -hmm. I love rice. That's I've been eating rice instead of mashed potatoes for over probably 25 years, and uh, you know, rice is my specialty when it comes to cooking. I got a special way to cook it. So I was just looking at some of their rice they have in here. I know you might even want to go on something from them oh i'm going to i'm going to yeah. i've already thought about it so this is anfi i'm going to mm -hmm. pull up a year's chart on it just to look at it. it looks to me like i've not drawn any trend lines on this one either so i'm going to draw a few fast ones real fast we hit this target i think i called vegas i said what did i say 77 or something like that oh uh, yes you said 77 yeah i had 76 yeah, so I, I looked at it, and we were, we were right on, both of us. I would have said 77, 76, and that's the high we hit. So if we want to bring this up, looks to me like we hit a bottom a couple weeks ago here at 30, 3, 30 cents. And now we've, we had a little run up to the 50 SMA, pulled back, and now we've broke that SMA. So we've got another level we need to catch up to, and that's going to be the 100. And we can carry that up to... I would say 97.42, somewhere in that area. Not always that accurate, but that's pretty close to where I would see it. And I see a first resistance about 84.46, 85, somewhere in there. And then you got that gap to fill, and that's up here around 135. And this thing had a year high of 444. So like everything else, last year everything sold off, and we're on a rebound. So my crystal ball is telling me right now this thing's wanting to bounce back up. So if we can hit that 85, then that hit that next resistance at, at 97, 
and then run up to that 100 SMA at 106. That'd be a nice little target to hit. And then if the momentum's still there, bring it on up higher to that 132 level. And that sounds to me pretty reasonable. And and I just I just like the way this chart looks. It just looks like an oversold chart. It's bouncing back up. It's hitting the moving averages. And we're going to bring it down to just the daily one more time. And I'm going to try to draw in a couple of supports for a pullback. I see, Oh, that's a beautiful pullback support right there. You see that? We had that high. Then it tried to hit hit that high again and, and pulled back and fell back. And then we tried to hit that high again. It consolidated and then bounced on up and hit the next resistance that I had that I showed you where I got that from from uh, just a few minutes ago on that yearly chart. So let's see if this thing can pull back to 64. That's going to be your solid support level. Solid. Then you have another one right here, right around 69, right around 70 cents. So it could probably pull back to that at 70 cents. And if that don't hold, it'll take that 64. And it'll definitely drop down to either one of these three moving averages. I have the 50, the 100, and the 200. And also look at your EMAs. See if it crawls up on that 8 EMA tomorrow and, and holds up against it. I'd use the 8, the 13, and the 20. And that's ANFI, and the next one we're going to talk about was a beautiful trade today, and it's VTVT. Yeah, so, you know, VTVT, uh, just a reminder, you know, it's a biopharma company. Uh, they're very into the treatment of Alzheimer's and type 2 diabetes, as well as the inflammatory disorders for the prevention of muscle weakness. So I got to tell you, this drug, I hope that this gets approved down the road. So many people I know in my own family had <laughs> Alzheimer's. So not a laughing matter, but I was just thinking, oh, my gosh, I could get Alzheimer's myself. So I was like, oh, my God, can you imagine? Um, but, hey, you know what? Sometimes it could be hereditary. So um, you just don't know. So this stock here, we did watch it. Now, someone said to me earlier in the day that they received some patent on um, – VT, VT. But if you go to their pipeline information, um, you can take a look at the pipeline. If you go to their website, it's vtvttherapeutics.com. So they do have quite a few things in the pipeline. I mean, three of them are in phase one and there are a couple of them, the diabetes ones are in phase two, but those ones were completed. So, but they do have right now an ongoing phase one B and two, and they're expecting, and I'm expecting to see two some interim analysis early 2019 and that's for their glucokinase activator which is the ttp399 so this stock here was alerted at the price entry of two dollars and 74 cents as the trade idea and uh people did trade it and had a nice little move today and uh, let me just see here, Jim. Did I say that this was looking good for a continuation? Let me look at VTVT a little closer. Yes, I did say to people in the room that did trade it uh, or people that were looking for a swing trade, I did say to them that I did like the way that the weekly chart looked. I liked the fact that the Bollinger Bands were spread, which told me that there was some good volatility. I liked that the um, closed above the upper band. And so I liked the whole chart. Um, and I did like it for a potential continuation, maybe even tomorrow. So I'm going to turn it over to Jim, who can talk about that in more detail than I than myself. All right. Well, here's the year's chart. We had an 840 high on it. Pulled back to low support right around 65 cents. Had some kind of drama here. Then bounced up to support level and then pulled back. So we played traded this, oh heck, just a couple weeks ago on a run. It hit this bottom down here, had that real hard sell. So when it sells off, it sells off. I mean, they're solid. There's nothing about rebounding at all. So this is like a 20-day. I'm going to pull up the 20-day. See, just a couple weeks ago when it was down here at a buck, we ran this thing all the way up to 350. And it pulled back. See how it pulled back pretty drastically. It pulled back a dollar fifty to into after hours, and the next day it ran back up. Tried to pull that resistance again right here, right around three ten. 
then we ran up and it and almost it, the wick of that candle almost hit that 350 and it kind of the last five days it's pulled back it hit that there 100 sma and then we had a trend line all day today that just followed up that trend line and then here we are back now we broke past the resistance that i would call which i would say was right around 309 309 307 in that area because i don't go off the wicks i go off the base of the candles that's where i find the hard resistance at and then the wick is like an extra credit i would put post out wicks for maybe you know for the next resistance now that we busted past the base of them candles so i'm going to pull up the daily one minute it was called pretty much right out of the gate this morning people were mentioning it in the room we had a golden cross we had the spread on the on the moving averages where they they spread it out we had the big bounce up to 280 and it pulled back right against that 200 again i drew a trend line an extended trend line from here to here so i wanted it to follow that trend line all day long which it did and every time it pulled back to that trend line i would probably say hey we're maybe looking at a support level for a buy you know this is this is a vertical this ain't you know this just goes straight up to the side and it fell and it followed that all the way up then it followed the 50 day all the way up to the end of close here at 318 so we passed past that 314 resistance that i had so i'm going to pull up the 20 day chart one more time and i'm going to draw out the next resistances that i see and it's going to be the top of the wick of this candle here at 327 328 so i'm going to put 327 the next one's going to bounce right up to about 344 then we got 350. So those are the, and then if we have a support, now if this thing wants to pull back, look for around, I'd say right around this area where it consolidated in two different spots. One right here at the 309 level, and then the other one right down here around the 290 area. So definitely keep VTVT on watch for maybe a small pullback to 390. No more. And if it goes below that, I would go ahead and probably stop yourself out. And see if we can continue this run up to 327, 344, and 350. And then we're going to pull up a year's chart, which this, I think, was the year high. No. <coughs> so, I mean, we can go up higher with this with this dog, too. So if it breaks past them, I'm going to be drawing new resistances on this chart, which I already have on here. They can go on up, you know. So I'm just going to see how it goes tomorrow. VTVT. VT. I'd like, like to play the stock when it's running. Then I like to recognize it when it's pulling back. So the next one we're going to talk about is a real cool one today. That's going to be XSPA. Yeah, so Express Spa. So you guys know that this company is very involved. I mean, they got locations in the airport. You know, so if you're traveling, you can go there and get a little massage uh, while you're in between your flights. Uh, so, you know, a couple of things with this company. I mean, they did announce uh, in December that they're doing a franchise partnership in the health and wellness industry. And, you know, that was with Calm. And, you know, Calm uh, also is where the new, you know, we started reading more about the news here. And uh, you'll get, you'll take a look here if I just pull up the news here to show you guys. Uh, let's just see here. So, and by the way, the Express Spa location in Texas airport will be opening the first quarter of 2019. Um, so the first franchise partnership will be with Mr. Kevin Stutz, and he's going to open the one up at the Texas airport. So I don't know the exact launch date, but just so you know, um, we will see when that when that happens obviously there'll be another pr so you know that'll be in the first quarter of 2019 and uh that'll be the, uh, the franchise at the airport there in texas so if anyone's in texas you might and you're traveling you might want to check this place out so the news on the company also and we read this back in uh november i did read this uh when they had their 2018 financial results um, but anyhow, the news today was that they did complete the issuance of $3 million of convertible preferred equity to Calm at $0.62. Cents. So they did already receive $2 million back 
in November and they actually, it was a total of 3 million, but they got the remaining 1 million at the end of December 31st. And obviously they have uh, given them preferred equity convertible at 62 cents per share. And this is actually significant premium to the market price. Uh, as you can see, the price of the stock is nowhere near that. Um, and it definitely demonstrates Calm's belief in the company by obviously investing. Now, what is a convertible note? So just to keep it as simple as possible, just think of it as an IOU. And, you know, instead of paying cash, you agree to, you know, I'll, I'll give you something in return. I'm equity. So basically what happens is, the investor, in this case, Calm, gives the money to Express Spa, and uh, they, in turn, are given a convertible note, okay, uh, typically available to be exchanged for stock at a later time. But as you notice there, there's a price target uh, at a price of $0.62. Cents. So this, these notes have a maturity date, and that is when the note is due to be repaid, um, along with any interest. Um, if it has not converted to equity. So I don't want to get into too much of the math and confuse anyone. Um, but obviously for Calm to invest, I believe that they believe that there's a uh, good potential with the company. Uh, also, what I was looking at on Express Spa, I was taking a look at, <coughs> excuse me, their board of directors. I have to say, they got a pretty in, uh, impressive team. I mean, they have Bruce Bernstein, who's chairman of the board. He's the president of Rockmore Capital. Um, they also have John Engelman, who's the director, uh, and he works at DreamWorks uh, Animation. And then we have Richard, who's also a director, and he is a co-founder um, of Iroquois Capital Management, which I've seen also on previous um, Form 4s. And then we have Andrew, who is a managing partner and CEO of Mistral Equity Partners. And previously, he used to work at uh, CIBC World Markets. So they do have a very interesting uh, board members here. So nevertheless, we'll see what happens with Express Spa. We did see after hours there was some action. And uh, I'm going to let Jim talk about the chart because he was definitely uh, buying some dips after hours. So, yeah, Jim, what are your thoughts? Yeah, we talked about this stock, I think, a little ways back. Yes. If I remember right. November. I yeah, we talked about this, and and it kind of ran up a little bit. It had a nice little channel running up. Then we pulled back to that year low again, right around $0.12, cents, right around 11 So I realized this is what I'm going to draw this up for you, but I wasn't in this trade. We had a year high of 180 with a resistance right around 162 163 right there. But... uh. I'm going to pull up the daily chart on this and draw you up how I played it and how I got in it. So it's going to be a daily one minute. I was reckon I recognized it right after the market closed into after hours and somebody mentioned it to me on alert. It bounced on up and it hit a little support area right in here where it started to consolidate. So what I did is I drew me a little trend line right here. And after it ran up to this 26 area, I decided I'll see if it would pull back to that entry level. Yeah, I'm here. The whole, I don't know, I just lost you the whole time. Oh, you did? Not sure if the audience lost you or not. Nope, I don't think so. All right, continue. Okay, so we got we got right here at 22.03, and it bounced on up to that 26, and I said, well, I'm going to get in this thing, because I read that news that she was talking about, and by gosh, if it didn't pull right back to that 22 cents again, and that's where I took my entry at. And I bought a small amount, 3,000 shares. You know, I didn't want to take too big of a risk. But that's, you know, that's $700 or something like that. And it ran on up. So we ran up after hours up to 25, and we consolidated here. We closed right around, looks like 23.5 maybe, or 24, somewhere in that area. So I'm going to be watching this early tomorrow. If it pulls back again, I'll probably get more and load up. But I'd like to go ahead and scalp this as a scalp play. It's not going to be a swing for me. And I'll just keep scalping it on the way up, playing these pullbacks. But that's how I find that little support. I drew that trend line right there. And you see how it bounced up. Then it came right back to that support level.
because it consolidated in that area and that's how I find support levels and then I just go ahead and draw me up a couple resistance lines on the way up and I try to hit them resistance lines you know, there's two or three of them right there and then I'm gonna say I'm gonna try to bring it up to the this one right here so I'll be watching this tomorrow these are gonna be exit points for me maybe if I want to get out if I think it's gonna pull up that 26 that's gonna be where I need to break but actually I want it to break the 2538 actually it should break this 25 because that's where it consolidated the most you have a little weakness up here maybe a few trades got in there but so let's see if we can bring this back up to 25 <coughs> and run it up to 26 and I'm gonna bring up the 20 day chart just to see what it looks like we busted past the 20 day resistance after hours at 2155 that's right here so we're starting a new leaf pull up three month just get one more little small look at it and here we are I mean we're up past the three month highs three month high here was right around 2272 so let's see if we can bring this on up and have the breakout that we're calling for if not I'll go ahead and scale out tomorrow and wait for a pullback and that's XSPA a pullback to get back in because I'm definitely liking this stock now and I noticed they had 750 employees so it's not no That's small right. company no nope. and the next one is one of Vegas's favorite stocks she's been following for a couple of years oh yeah and this is called glue exactly oh my gosh can I just tell you so this stock um, you guys know they're into the gaming device they're a developer, they're a publisher, they do mobile games for their smartphones, for tablets. You know, they, they were founded in San Francisco, California in 2001. And they'd make all kinds of stuff for the Android, Amazon, Windows, Google, everything. And, um, you know, I did mention previously that this company is owned by um, Tencent. Uh, not all of it. He, he owns 15%. So you guys know uh, Tencent um, paid $126 million back then to have this 15% stake. And then, um, you know, Neil Earl, I got, uh, sorry, not Neil, Nick. Nick Earl is the CEO. He's been the CEO now just a little over two years. And you know what? Nick's doing a good job. I mean, he's got a seat on the board of directors. Now, Nick, uh, Nick, um, He's been in the, he joined Glue in 2005. He used to work at Electronic Arts, and um, which is another gaming company. When he was there, he was a senior vice president. So he's got a lot of experience, okay? So uh, I think having him be the president of this company was probably one of the best decisions they've made. But, you know, aside from that, I will say that Glue has made some serious moves here and this is a new 52 week high and i am loving the volume uh especially yesterday was amazing volume and i'm just so impressed that all like every single day this is just making higher highs every single day now it had a little challenge you know at one time um you know i would say back in november this was a strong buy when this was under $7. And I've talked about this to other people saying, you know what? I kind of like this under seven bucks. You know, I can kind of see this going towards 10, but not till next year. And I kind of said, you know, maybe towards next summer. And you know what? We're in the new year and look at this. We're going to hit $9 very soon. This chart is super bullish. Jim, what do you see here? Because all I see is green. And uh, glue looks like it's going to stick to the target and keep going higher. I remember this stock very well, very well, because you and I have talked about it so many times. And we bring it up almost every week. If, it, if it's not every week, it's every day. But this, we called this stucker when it was back down at $3.60 this last year in 2018. We called it once it hit this 200 SMA on a yearly chart and we played this little channel for a while and then all of a sudden it started breaking out I think that Taylor Swift news came out 
it was on her birthday or something. They made a game about her and they had the Kim Kardashian. I showed you some of the games that are in it. Yeah. I remember the Kim Kardashian one was really, really successful. Yeah. And then, and it's had its pullbacks, but every time it pulls back, it pulls back to a pretty good little support channel. And I, you see how messy I've got this chart up. I mean, I've really, we've really studied this chart for almost two years, almost a year and a half. I'm solid for a year, but I remember talking about this back in October, of, not last year, but of 217. And back then, I'm going to pull up the three-year chart, and it was down, is that three-year? There we go. It was down here to $1.73. In 2016, we were talking about it right about in here, in this channel that I'm showing you right now, and it, and so when it bounced up and it ran up to the four dollars five dollar area I kind of said vegas you know i think it hit a resistance here at right around 437 and it pulled on back to that support level which i just loved at 364 then we had a couple days where it just really tanked and then it bounced on back and so it ran on up and here in the last 2017 it ran all the way up and now we're going to pull up this uh three month and I'm going to erase all this junk on here because I just can't see it I just can't look at the chart anymore but she, she's got a ten dollar price target on this stock she's mentioned that months ago and I can't deny her I finally you know I said man this thing's really looking hot the last three days we bounced from 750 up to 893 we have three white soldiers right here three days in a row so this is telling me that it can still and it closed up here at a high on the top of the base which maybe will have us another breakout candle tomorrow if not and i say you know if if not it'll just come back to a support area and then in a couple of days you'll be able to have that breakout so i'm going to pull up a 20 day and just kind of draw up what i think are going to be some support lines on a 20 day i see one right around here right around 818 I see another one right here around 827 where it matches that up there. So we get on higher up here to 842. This is off of, mostly off of yesterday, Friday's, or yesterday, which was Monday. It's bounced, and then it had a continuation today and kind of curved up. I wouldn't be surprised if it pulled back to around 880. I'd like to see it hold that 880, and if that don't hold, you're probably going to be looking at around 862. Now, I'm, I'm bullish on this stock just because I say it's going to pull back a little bit. They all do. They all do it. They just, but here in the last two days, you didn't have much of a pullback. It just continued to run. But here this last run, you see how it pulled back? Pulled back from 1729 all the way up to almost a buck. It pulled back in two days. So, but we've had a good four day run on this stock. I mean, high after high after high after high and i have a five day rule but i think this run is from 729 all the way up to 895 almost nine bucks that's two dollars and 75 cent run in four days i would expect it to pull back to this 850 level no lower than that no lower than 850 mark my words and it'll bounce on up and continue the run up to ten dollars this is glue it's a gamer stock uh, I thought I was sure that uh, this was going to run last Christmas. It kind of consolidated. You see, we, we had up and down channels here, and we had a bad, we had probably, we had the worst December in market history of pullback. So everything pulled back with it. And I called that out. I said, this is all garbage. It, 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 it was not trustworthy. And I said, in 2019, things are going to start bouncing back up. And that's what things are doing. They're bouncing back up. So this is glue. I like it. Vegas loves it. It's a gamer stock. It's along with here, H-E-A-R. You might want to put that one on your watch list because them two kind of coincide together. Here's, you know, the headphones. And I really think they're the top number selling headphones. And that's H-E-A-R. The next one we're going to talk about is Mobot. Yeah, I just want to mention about glue too. Yeah. Like, you know, some people can't afford the stock 
And so, you know, I really try my best and along with everyone else in our room that is very helpful, uh, which is why we love um, stocks so much is we're actually loving options too, because, um, you know, not everyone can afford, you know, a stock that's $8 plus. I mean, especially if you have a smaller account. I mean, how many shares can you buy if you only have $1,000? Uh, you're only going to get about 100 shares or a little more than that. But I mean, it's not easy. So, you know, we did uh, have on Friday last week because we did notice that glue had a double top. Um, we did mention last Friday that there would be a really good options trade to get the glue $8 strike, and which is the $8 target for glue. And the expiry date on those are January 18, which is next week. And those were only 35 to 40 cents at the time. And you know what? They're over 100% today. And we're still going to make more money on that option call. So congratulations to the ones with small accounts. They're growing very quickly. And last but not least, Jem, Mbot. Yep. Okay. Well, we did see Mbot today pop on scanners. Uh, I am not in Mbot. But uh, for those of you that might want to keep Mbot on your watch list, um, you know, you might like Mbot as uh, one to watch. Um, I'm not really familiar with uh, what they've been doing lately because I haven't really been keeping track of the stock. But <coughs> um, this company, uh, Microbot, they've been uh, definitely trading a lot higher. Uh, middle of the day, I think the stock went up uh, 47% today and uh, traded at, what, 278? Is that yeah. so? Yeah. So uh, where do we see here the chart here? Because can we see a continuation or not? Now, you know, Mbot, do you guys know what they do. Uh, they're not a robot. They do a preclinical medical device company. They do develop micro robotics assisted medical technologies um, for minimally, minimally invasive surgery space. Uh, so they do have, I think, two product candidates, including what they call a self-cleaning shunt for a different uh, medical treatment called hydrocephalus and also another one for a semi-disposable endoscope, which is going to be used in colonoscopy procedures. And everyone these days definitely gets a colonoscopy. And if you don't get one done uh, over the age of 50, you should make sure it's part of your physical every year. So, Jim, what do you see about the MBOT chart? Yeah, I had one of them done. Oh, those aren't fun. Yeah. Lucky, <laughs> lucky me, I was asleep maybe when they did they'll, it. Maybe they'll use an MBOT on you. <laughs> MBOT. Yeah. Well, I love the website. I'm showing you the website here. I mean, I really like the website. They have, if you get to the website, go to the news area, and they've got talking about the the microbot medical announcement FDA pre submission milestones for 2019, and they'll talk about a little bit. Oh, I see the word baloney in there, held in Bologna, Italy. <laughs> okay, but uh, at 219 just talks about some milestones that they had in 2018 it might be something in good interesting read i like mbot we used to play this when it was down a little bit lower it was kind of a joke you know mbot and we'd be on it and i'd flip it a couple of times but what i see now i see it had the breakout so i'm going to pull up the chart there's the 20 day so i'm going to pull up the yearly chart first yearly daily so, you know, you've had highs up here on this thing right around 12, 14 bucks. And it's pulled back to 138 during that market sell off that my crystal ball said the time for the rebound. And I was telling everybody, man, you got some favorite stocks, pull them up, look at them, get in them if you think they're worthy. Because nothing's changed. We've got a great economy right now. And I think it's just, like I said, oversold. So we run up and we hit that 50 SMA here at 278. You see that? We hit that first moving average right there and closed right there. Solid resistance right there at 296. And I'm looking at the next one coming up. And it's another, I mean, this can bounce up another 30 cents to 329 to 345. So I'm definitely going to be, I'm not in MBOT right now. I'd like to see it pull back. I'm going to go to the daily. Look at the daily real fast. 
After hours, we did pull back to 240. Had a high of three bucks, so that's a 60 cent drop. That ought to tell you to be careful. We almost hit that previous high right here at 236. We're just four cents off of it. So that's where I think support, if I was going to draw this out and tell you where support was going to be, I'd say it'd be right here at this 338 level, which I already had on a trend line. But I could bring it down just a little bit, somewhere in that vicinity, somewhere in that 30s. Let's see if this bounces up. If it don't, it's going to pull back to the next consolidated area, which is right around 214 to 221. And this is MBOT. Add it to your watch list and just learn the chart. I think this is going to be exciting stock for 2019. It's yeah. off to a good start right now. It sure is. So keep that on your watch list yep. along with all these other ones we talk about. You That's know, why I tell you guys, have a pen and paper ready when you watch the videos. If there's anything that you like, write it down. You're not going to remember it the next day. Then I want to tell you about my play of the week, which is AXSM. We've cut this thing down. I'm going to pull up a five-day chart on this. Or actually, I'll pull up a year. Just show you. This really, I was telling Vegas a little earlier, I said, man, this kind of scares me sometimes when a stock has like a solid resistance of around $4. <laughs> And it pulls back to 194, and then next week we're up here in the 916 area. I mean, it just the run was just incredible. I mean, it really caught my attention yesterday, and we played it like a charm yesterday, and then it pulled back again today, and we played it again. And this was on our aftermarket report that we had yesterday. So I'm pulling up. The, I'm gonna pull up the five day, 15 minute. We called this thing right out of the gate. I said, this is going to be the stock of the day because we had a big gap up. We also had the Golden Cross. So the thing gapped up pre-market and ran all the way up to 769 from a low, let me repeat, 267. That's a five, almost a $4.60, $0.70 bounce pre-market. Pre-market. So I looked for the pullback, and right out of the gate at open, I said, let's get in this thing and run it on up, and then we'll play the pullback on it. And I found resistance up here at 843. Again, five days ago, we were down here at 221. So that's a $6 bounce. And then it pulls back. Up. And just the same thing, it bounces up so high like that, you've got to know. You've got to have it in your heart and your feelings that this ain't going to pull back, and it's going to hit your moving averages, or it's going to hit a previous high. And it did not hit the previous high. It went down below that. But I called it once it hit that 50 SMA. And then it bounced on up again and run all the way up that trend line that I had drawn from from that from this area right here. I just took it there and it just ran all the way up. And then it pulled back today. So I don't know what this thing's going to do tomorrow. I'm just... Like I told Vegas, I panic sometimes when a stock runs so big, so fast, so hard, so solid, and it and it had share rotation of about 20 million shares, I think, the float was. And just a marvelous stock to watch and to play. And then we'll pull up the daily, one minute. And you can see the pullbacks, the different calls I made, how it just kind of consolidated here right around that 676 after hours, and then popped up. And then just ran the trend line all the way up. Now we've consolidated and we didn't dip. So this thing could probably, I don't know, you know, I, I'm, I'm puzzled with it. I think it can probably go up. But I, to me, I think we're kind of hitting a resistance. And I'd love to see it pull back to around 7 bucks, Maybe a little bit, maybe around 8 And scalp it again tomorrow. This is AXSM. This is my play of the week. We're going to see what happens on Wednesday. Vegas? Okay, and I just want to mention that uh, one of our, um, you know, one of the gentlemen that we collaborate with is uh, Kiko, which is Patrick, and uh, he does uh, night school classes. And so if you guys uh, listening want to participate in the uh, night school, he's got a free class tonight starting at 930 Eastern Standard Time, runs live on YouTube all the way till 11. So if you're interested uh, just click on the Discord link in our in video here, and when you come into the room, I will post the YouTube link that he hosts the class in. Um, it's not the same link each time. It's always a different link. 
uh, that he hosts it on. So just come into the chat room if you want um, to just just to collect the link, and then um, you can now, you can actually see him teaching live, and then you can ask questions uh, later on. So you're welcome to check it out if you don't want to. It's not a problem. Um, I'm just putting it out there because he's doing a free class and uh, who doesn't like things that are free? Uh, the other last thing I just want to mention is that uh, Donald Trump will be addressing the nation tonight at uh, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So we'll see how whatever he does mention um, affects anything in the market tomorrow. So we always have to be prepared um, for things that can pop in the market tomorrow. So, you know, We'll see what, what happens. So on that note, wish everyone a really good night, and I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. I wouldn't be surprised if the steel stocks <laughs> pop up and the concrete stocks pop up, the masonry stocks. Yeah, that's stocks. me, construction stocks. So yep, I wouldn't be surprised. Let's see what happens. Fencing all stocks. Right. So this okay. is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, January the 8th, 2019, and we love stocks. Oh,